Hey there, folks. So I've been talking a lot about uh, some consoleizer type mods for Game Boys. Uh, this one in specific is the GBHD Color from uh, Gamebox Systems. I actually went out and bought one of these because I thought it was pretty neat, but also because I saw this particular one at a discount. I, I did do a video on this one. I'll link to that in the description if you're curious. But the point is, video is not about this, but um, other similar consoleizer type mods. I've got a GBA HD uh, in the works. Probably have that finished before this video goes up, but we'll see. Uh, anyway, point is, I've been meaning to talk about some uh, some other options for playing Game Boy games on the TV. And, um, you know, I usually do, like, the TV out Game Boy kits or whatever, but I always mention, you know, honorable mention, Game Boy Player. So, I bought a GameCube. Now, oh, Mako. Why would you buy a GameCube when you have literally any other way to play a GameCube or Game Boy games on TV? Like, yes, yes, that is that is the point. Thank you for seeing right through me. Um, the GameCube was a dollar. I couldn't help myself. The Game Boy Player was fifteen dollars. But you notice this is this is all I have now. I do have a controller for this somewhere. Um, I do actually have Wii consoles and plenty of controllers for those. So I could just pull a controller from that, that'll be fine. Um, it did not come with the sticker, I put it there. But, GameCube was a dollar. Let's see if we can't get it working, right? I think that would be pretty neat. Um, but the biggest problem I have right now is I don't have a power supply for this. Now, this is just 12 volts. I can rig something up if I want to. Hell, I could even glue in a Wii power supply and it should work just fine. I have no idea if this GameCube works. But, that's not the point. We're gonna mod it until it works anyway. Um, yeah. One dollar GameCube. Let's spend even more on that in mods. So, I bought this because, um, who I am as a person. Uh, apparently you can just get these on the internet, and, um, you know, I, I wouldn't know anything about that, but there's a, uh, there's a mod chip, a boot disc for the mod chip, and then, uh, some SD mods, but we'll we'll circle back to these potentially never, but later at the very least. Um, this video is about this because instead of buying a uh, power supply, I'm gonna make my own. I'm gonna take this uh, kit from Mr. HDR. You might have seen this floating around on uh, Twitter. Uh, he made a power supply kit for the GameCube that does USB-C. So instead of having to use that proprietary plug, we just build this thing, install it in the GameCube, and then we can use USB-C PD to power the thing. Now, this is a, uh, an early, a much earlier model. Um, he's gone through several iterations of this thing since, and in my defense, I, I've had this for quite a while and just haven't gotten to it, but getting to it today. Um, but anyway, my understanding is that he plans on selling these things, and because he's selling them, he has asked me very kindly to not show what this specific chip is, hence the uh, blue piece of tape on it. Um, give him at least a little bit of a leg up on the competition so he can at least get his finished before they get cloned. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and uh, get it assembled. One of the things that I don't really like about this kit, but there's not much that can be done about it because of how Nintendo decided to do things. Uh, this specific kit uses USB PD 12 volt, which, uh oh, my solder paste is giving me trouble. Oh, I'm gonna make a mess, aren't I? Oh, it's dried out. That can't be good. Um, one of the things I don't like about USB PD-12 is that 12 volts is not supported on a lot of power supplies. So, if you have a 12 volt supported power supply, then you're better off than most. But, um, this means something like a Nintendo Switch power supply will not work for this mod. Which is a little unfortunate, but 
It is what it is. Uh, alternatives would require quite a few more components because this is just negotiating. Uh, I don't think I can use solder paste for this. Because this is just negotiating 12 volts straight from the power supply. Oh, this is going to be very messy. Whereas uh, any other implementation would require um, negotiating like 15 volts from the power supply or something and then stepping down. But it's what I get for not storing my stuff properly. Let's get that one soldered down first. See what happens. Might just work itself out when it gets hot. Yeah, there we go. This would be much easier with a um, stencil, but also with solder paste that wasn't all hard and nasty. There we go. Look at that. All cleaned up. You can't even tell. Actually, that does look pretty good. So unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on your point of view, he did send me some extra components, so now I don't know what goes where. Thank you, HDR. I do genuinely appreciate it. So we have 10 microfarad caps and 1 microfarad caps. I don't remember which goes where. So I will have to pause and ask HDR. Presumably. Oh, and there's four resistors too. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pause and uh, bug HDR. At least I know where the uh, transistor goes though. Put a little bit more solder. soldered down. That's a new one. I've never seen those go sideways. Alright, here we go. And might as well do the port, I suppose. Come on. You can do it. How about a little flux?
Uh, I should have just soldered this by hand. Oh well. There it goes. I'll have to finish that by hand if nothing else. Ah, uh, no, it should be fine. Alright. I am going to be back now. I'm going to look up these values for the capacitors and the resistors so I get the right ones in the right spots, and uh, we'll go from there. Alright, there we go. Got it all soldered together. Um, I was able to figure out which resistors go where by process of elimination, but the capacitors I had to bug the man himself on because of... Um, well, this one, C2, is on the 12 volt line, and we don't want to use a 5 volt capacitor on that, or else it will uh, explode. And uh, I had hoped this would work, but it appears it will not. So these things attached right here are the uh, cut templates for the uh, port itself installing out of the GameCube portion. Uh, unfortunately, they're um, a little bit delicate and kind of difficult to remove from this specific prototype. So I won't be able to get that far with them, unfortunately. But at least I can still get the board nice and clean. So at this point, if you have a multimeter or something, um, we can actually test this and make sure it's actually going to work. So let's see what happens. Oh, it's already up on my desk. I might as well keep doing that. Because I have the meter portion. This, if we plug that in, should kick on and start shooting 12 volts over, and indeed it does. Um, oh, there it goes. Now, again, it's important to use the um, power supply that can supply 12 volts because USB PD should not work if it doesn't supply the correct voltage that is negotiated. But there is also a 15 volt version of this chip that will um, destroy your GameCube if you try and use it. Alright, so I guess let us move on to the GameCube portion of things, which means this thing needs to come apart. I think I'm going to do most of that off camera on account of this thing not even fitting under the camera. So uh, I'll be back in just a moment when I've got this thing uh, a little bit more torn down. Alright, got screws out and top should just lift it. Well, the top should just lift off, and hopefully your GameCube is um, not a biohazard on the inside. Oh, God, I don't even know where my brush is. Oh, it's unfortunate. <sighs> All right, well, it's not too bad. This plate comes right off, and then I guess we can start doing some... I'm going to go clean this thing a little bit. Alright, not perfect, but I don't feel as bad touching it now, so I guess that's all that matters. Um, so I don't know that we have to tear it down. I don't know that we have to tear it down that much further than this. I know these two cables need to come unplugged so that we can take that out. So to get this far, all I did was um, pull out the four corner screws and lift the top off. And now, this is the part I want to work on. Comes out with one screw, it's just the uh, power board, oh that's interesting. It appears my specific variant might not be compatible, because this 
would normally go right here and that would get plugged into that thing but unfortunately this is a slightly different variant well that's unfortunate I mean I guess that's what I get for only having the one GameCube variant but I didn't know they came in multiple variants well there you go I guess that's it I'll bodge this thing together and uh, report back at some point I guess from here, I would normally get connected right about there, and then we'd cut some holes to get that installed nicely. I think that goes right about there. But, huh, there you go. I bet I can buy this whole part and then get the specific one that I need, but. All right, I'll get you old next one. All right, so I've just done some research before continuing, and I have learned that uh, there are two variants of the GameCube power switch, and of course I have the one that is not compatible with this mod. Uh, the problem is that this is this power switch is a full custom switch from Alps. Uh, there is no PCB here to solder to. It's just plastic, and then we have bus bars on the inside connecting the power input through this switch to these two connectors. So unless I were to in interface between this plug and this board, I can't do this. Uh, my other option is to solder directly to these power terminals. I don't know which is which. I can take a guess though, but that's not the point. The point is I did a fit check and there is nothing stopping me from putting the board exactly where it is right now. Uh, which is a little bit further over than uh, it would normally go because this, whoops, whoops, let's see how many things I can knock over, right? So I had that right about the middle there, give or take. Um, it fits into this shelf quite nicely, I think. Uh, but if we were to put this board here, install it where it would normally go. You see it is right next to the board instead of on top of it. And then I will just run bodge wires over to the connectors. I think that will be fine. The uh, only problem, really... Yeah. Is that I can't have this board all the way over. And unfortunately that chip gets a little bit in the way. Put it right there. I think that was HDR's intent. No, never mind. I think his intent was to jam that like right there. Because this back hole right above where it says J1 is supposed to line up with that hole right there. So this is supposed to go right here, right across the top. I am going to put it down here on this shelf, however. But that will require that I modify this board a little bit and cut a hole. I am going to do that and I will be right back. I'm gonna do this off camera because this part is, um, like it's, it's totally irrelevant. It's something that only I will have to do because only I have this specific iteration of this mod and the wrong power switch, so. Going forward, you guys should probably have the crack power switch and the current iteration of this mod. Uh, so I will be right back, I guess. Cool, so, so far, it's been actually pretty straightforward to get that hole. Uh, I'm not done with it yet. I still gotta file it out into something I can work with. Uh, but my method so far was to drop this in place and then use the SIM card removal tool from the iFixit kit slip that through the screw hole and use it to mark up the plastic where the screw is going to go. Then I drilled two one sixteenth inch holes or whatever your smallest drill bit is exactly where those marks were. And then I was able to drop the uh, cut template in and drop the screws in to hold it in place. 
And then I drilled out three pilot holes with a 330 seconds in, uh, inch drill bit because I don't have a three millimeter drill bit. Um, yeah, I know, believe it or not, but they're harder to get in the States than you might think. Uh, but anyway, now that I've got those five holes drilled, um, I just gotta file that smooth so that I can put this port here. It's basically already done. Uh, now for finishing this off, I am going to use my needle file set from Harbor Freight. Nice, cheap, gets the job done. Just jam that in there until I've got a USB type C shaped hole and I'll be back. All right. And uh, 20 minutes later, we whittling that thing down, and the port just barely fits, but that's fine. It's perfect. Now I'm going to use the, um, the cut template as a little bezel, because otherwise these screws will sink into that plastic pretty darn easily, so... The screws are necessary to keep the port from uh, torquing out of here. Mayhaps. However, this screw isn't making contact. This thing is not all the way inserted. There. Doesn't look the best, but it's nice and solid. And um, it works, presumably. Let's find out. Let's test it one more time. That plugs right in. Uh, but we have no 12 volts. Oh, there it goes. That's awkward. Let me double check that thing. I may have accidentally tweaked it just now when I was installing it. I did! And go figure, half the pins are broken off. Let's resolder it. And then try that one more time. That's why it's important to uh, use those screws, because this port will break off pretty darn easily. Come on. This port does not have any anchors on the PCB itself. The only anchors are the screws you use to attach it to the shell. Without those screws, this thing will break off exceptionally easy.
And with that PCB as a bezel there, I can use these screws to uh, seat the port inside the board. And if all goes well, that should be that. Try it out. 12 volt. And if we flip it, 12 volt. Hooray! Now I can continue with the install. So now we need to get this hooked up to this thing, but unfortunately some of my board is in the way. So I'm gonna I'm gonna come in here with the snips and commit a crime. You know, until this last like two weeks, I have never once lost my snips, and now I lose them multiple times an hour. So I'll be back. Excellent. I had managed to set the uh, GameCube on top of them, so of course I couldn't find them. So here's what I'm going to do. I hope that hurt you as much as it hurt me, HDR. But now that fits in there nicely and I can get that attached to that. So chances are pretty damn good that they did not change the order of those. So I'm gonna solder it first and then check it later. But first we will need to get this tinned. I cut off a little bit too much of that pad, but we'll make it work. Handy? Nope. That's okay. How about Are you kidding me? I don't even have any of that stuff. <sighs> One moment. Grumble, grumble, grumble. I found it. Just gonna use some 22 gauge. Oh, I was about to scream because I couldn't find my wire strippers. how we prevent wire from coming untangled. Not the best way, but it is a way. And we don't need to strip much because this is cheap PVC wire and the coating is gonna run down pretty much instantaneously anyhow. As soon as I tin it.
Now it probably makes sense to use longer wire than this so that I have some flexibility in this thing. But that seems like a problem for somebody else. Especially since that is just barely long enough to hit that anyway. Whoops. Oh well. You know, I'm gonna cut a longer wire. It's way too short. That is tempting fate right there. twice as long. There we go. It's nice and sturdy. Now I can come back. Solder that. Right there. And then from here, it's just a matter of reassembling the GameCube. That should go like that, no problem. And hopefully it all works. But first, this message from our spot, no, I'm kidding. I want to double check the polarity. So on this board, you can tell because they thankfully color coded the wires. The back one is ground and the front one is 12 volt. Let's double check that. So I want to make sure I got the polarity right. Actually, we'll just put it in voltage mode. Da, plug that in, and then, ah oh shoot, what did I say, front one is positive, back one is ground, switch the GameCube on, and I think I have that backwards, yep, I uh, have that backwards, that is a good thing I checked, that could have been uh, catastrophic. Okay, easy fix. I think I checked. There we go. Got it swapped around. Now the back pin is positive, front pin is ground, as I presume it should be. So let's do some testing. I've got the GameCube right here. I'm going to plug the fan in, and only the fan. 
and then plug the power in. And the fan doesn't work. Maybe the console has to be switched on for the fan to work. Or maybe this thing just doesn't work. Who knows? Uh, that's a good question. I guess I'm gonna try and fit this thing back together and see what happens. You can't even see what I'm doing. It's all off camera. All right. Should be very straightforward. Oh, shoot. As soon as I went to plug that in, these wires bumped this board up, and I bet it just broke. Yep. Ah, oh, okay. Well, I'm going to fix that again. And maybe glue this port down or something, because this is ridiculous. All right. We're almost there. I got the power switch back in. I uh, just have to, I've got it re-soldered. I even glued it down so that that stops happening, hopefully. Um, probably not, but hopefully. And we'll hope for the best. It shouldn't have to move anymore on account of me having this thing almost entirely reassembled. That'll drop in there. Just need to get this on there again, and we'll be good to go. Unfortunately, this is not meant to go in, in this order. But with how many freaking times I've broken this thing, I'm afraid to do any other order. up and then I went to get the screwdriver and it was no longer lined up. Oh, and this is why we beta test things. <laughs> I'll figure this out and I'll uh meet you back. All right. Good Lord. I got it in there. Everything is good. We're going to do one more quick test before full reassembly. So the cube is switched off. I'm just paranoid that I've got this uh, in the wrong orientation. So we're going to try it out. There is USB-C in. You can see the power supply Showing 11 volt or 11.89 volts, which is close enough to 12, but it won't matter. Okay, set this to voltage mode, and I'm gonna stick this right in this connector here. It should be off. Oh, I didn't really think about this, did I? Well, it's still getting 12 volts in. And the ground is probably still connected. Oh, that's interesting. No, the ground mode. Ground is not connected. Neither of those are, it appears. Well, that's unfortunate. I want to test it before plugging it in. Oh, wait. Hmm. 
that is showing negative 12 volts. Or it was. Mayhaps. Hmm, maybe I should just try it and see what happens. Eh, here goes nothing. Let's see if it pops. Oh, yeah, that was backwards. Power supply shut right off. <laughs> Ah, I had it right the first time. All right, take two. I've got the wires switched. Huh? 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 How neat is that? Now I've just got to put this thing back together. But it's working more than it ever has before, so that's nice. Laser seems to work, too. Or at least it makes red light. Who knows if it actually reads anything. Um, I'll try that out later, though. Fans on. I had it right. I can't believe I second-guessed myself. It would have been fine. But, well, yeah, there you go. I, I think it's pretty neat. Uh, one of the... One of the things that I know HDR was working on specifically that he wanted to get corrected before this version was he wanted to have some input protection on there because as is you can just plug this in and then plug in a GameCube power supply and power it off of both and I mean that doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world but if you plug in a non-compatible power supply while a GameCube power supply is plugged in it's gonna it's gonna short out that power supply we don't want that but, let's try that out, like that, huh, huh, comes right on, I'll flip the connector over, comes right on, ah, uh ah, -huh. so it works, if only I um, didn't have to put it over there, but it is what it is, anyway, I am going to get this put back together. And now that I have a way to power it, I will go find a AV cable and try out the Game Boy Player, I guess. Uh, I got a little more tinkering to do while I'm in here. Plus, I got this random board here that I gotta see if it works. And I'll try it out in here. Anyway, that's all I got. I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching. And thanks to HGR who sent this my way to check out. Um, I, I think you've still got a little, little ways to go, at the very least, uh, if you want it to be compatible with the version that my GameCube has, the version of the Switch. Um, if not, otherwise, seems nice. Thanks, bud. And uh, for the, everyone else, I will throw some links in the description. Eventually, we'll get there. Um, otherwise, have a fantastic night. I'll catch you all next time.